I was asked to do a top 10 video for the best factions of Total War Rum 2 and I'm going to sort of do it but I want to do it in a different way that I think makes more sense since it's difficult to compare factions that have widely different strengths and weaknesses I'm going to to do the top three factions for different categories and then I'm going to show some nice counter armies for those factions. So the first category is Sword Spam or Melee Rush. And the top three factions, in my opinion, for Sword Spam Melee Rush is going to be Tylus because of their good mid-tier tribal warriors that are extremely tanky with a high armor. Low, uh, the melee attack is on the low side, they have good weapon damage, uh, good charge bonus, but the shield wall and the the shield wall and the armor is going to mean that they will be able to stay in the fight for a long, long time. You're going to pick the Strategist General to get the most out of your Orthzorn. If you pick the Strategist General, you'll be able to use Headhunt and Battle Rhythm to increase his killing power, and then you can use Second Wind to make him fresh again. Very useful. Some Levy Freeman are always nice to have. Uh, the Raiding Horse, one of the things that really makes Tylus strong is that they have good Javelin Cavalry. When these guys are out of Javelins, they are going to be able to do well in melee with 45 armor, 36 melee attack, 34 weapon damage. Just don't match them up against enemy cavalry because they don't have a bonus against large. Very good in rear charging and in taking out enemy skirmishing units. Now what you're bringing for the rest of the army is going to depend on the army you're facing. If you're facing elephants for example, two Thracian Peltasts or even three mercenary Thracian Peltasts can be very useful and they can also be useful in melee after they have spent their 41 missile damage javelins because they have 28 melee attack, they have 30 armor and they have a very high amount of armor piercing damage. So there are several different things that you can do with uh, Tylus. You can go for Celtic Warriors for example. You can bring an additional uh, Noble Horse to have some elite cavalry to throw around. That can also be a very nice addition to, to Tylus. You can have additional uh, an additional Oath Zone unit. Or you can tank up on the Celtic Warriors. Let's see here. You can tank up on the Celtic Warriors to be able to deny enemy charges and to go for flanking so that you, you're going to go into the battle with a full roster. Um, so very, very strong uh, rush builds available for for Tylus with some some decent uh, decent supporting units in the form of raiding horsemen and mercenary Thracian Peltas. And there are of course a lot of other things you can do because you have Gallo Thracian infantry that is also a nice infantry unit. Uh, you have Thracian warriors. You have a lot of different options for what you can do with Tylus, and that's what makes Tylus strong. But the main strength of Tylus compared to other barbarian factions. Is going to be raiding horsemen and tribal warriors but the weakness of Tylus is that they don't have good mid-tier cavalry and I'll go over potential counters afterwards then we have the Boyai uh, the reason why the Boyai is such a strong rush faction is because their sword followers have extremely good stats for their price uh, decent armor good health very good morale 10 higher than on the tribal warriors good charge bonus um, good weapon damage and a very high melee attack for being a barbarian sword unit they will outclass and outperform the chosen sword units of all the other factions and they'll do very well against factions like rome in addition to this you have access to axe warriors and the axe warriors are not great when paired up against units had one on one but if you manage to support them and manage to charge enemy units with, for example, Heavy Horse, then the Axe Warriors are going to be able to grind it out and do a lot of damage because they have a high amount of armor piercing and a low amount of, of weapon damage. These units need time to work, but in the late game, and if they are supported, they can do amazing things against, against uh, heavily armored enemy units. You also have the Spear Warriors and the Veteran Spears for when you need some good spear support. But for a pure rush build, you can go for something like this. You have four axes, two Celtic warriors, two levy freemen, six sword followers, four heavy horse. The heavy horse is very important in taking out enemy skirmishers and fighting enemy cavalry. Also very important for charging key enemy units before you charge in with your own units. For the second um, most powerful, or for, for one of the other very powerful uh, sword, 
sword rush factions is of course Rome. And Rome is a bit special in that they have, across the board, they have really terrible charge values on their units. So what you're going to do is you're going to go for Hastati, you're going to go for veteran legionaries, and if you want to go pure rush, and you're up against, say, a barbarian faction, you can bring an elephant, and you can bring some cavalry, very cheap cavalry, to... So you can afford five Equite units, and the Equites are going to lose most cavalry engagements, if not all cavalry engagements. But what they will be able to do is they will be able to chase away enemy skirmishers, charge keying units before you send in your Hastati. And the way you're going to be using a build like this is that you're going to use your Hastati as speed bumps to absorb the charges of the good enemy, cav enemy uh, infantry. And then you're going to send in the veteran legionaries to grind it out against them with their very high melee attack. But for veteran legionaries, the charge bonus is only 15, so in a straight up charge against units like sword followers, they're not going to do as well as when they are able to get into a fight that is already happening. Now you can also, if you don't want to go for the elephants, you can also go for some socia equites extraordinary. They are also very good uh, and cheap shock cavalry, useful against barbarian uh, units, uh, barbarian factions. If you want some additional skirmishing support, you can go a bit lighter on the cavalry, and you can do a lot of damage to to key enemy units with the auxiliary zero notchers. They have access to both heavy shot and precision shot. So against units like Oats or these uh, archers are going to be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, you can also bring w only one Socia Equites and then have more cavalry. So Roman builds like this is going to be very difficult to face. And when we're talking about countering countering sword factions there is a lot of uh, confusion as to how you do it there are some some key key concepts now if you if you're going up against the boy eye for example and you pick tylus you're not ma you're not countering the boy eye with tylus you're going you're matching uh, tylus with the boy eye so if you're going to counter uh, what what um, the boy eye can bring what you're essentially doing is you're going to you're going to bring units that are going to negate the effectiveness of the the melee units of of uh, boya and this goes for both rome and and um Tylus as well you're going to pick units that counter and negate the effectiveness of the units so a good counter pick against the boya would for example be pontus and that is because Pontus has access to Scythe Chariots, and the Chariot directly counters the main strength of the Boyai. And the Boyai doesn't have very heavy shock cavalry that can stop Chariots dead in its tracks. You still need to be careful around the Heavy Horse, but you should be able to pull through the Heavy Horse. Uh, units that also are good would be the Mercenary Scythian Horse Archers. They would be able to counter the cavalry of the Boyai fairly effectively. You'll be able to do a lot of damage to key enemy units. And the boy eye doesn't really have a response to horse archers. Pontus also has access to very good cavalry in the form of Noble Blood and Cappadocian. The Cappadocian, is, uh, Cappadocian cavalry is the superior choice due to having higher weapon damage and melee attack. And it's not, very, it's not much cheaper than the Noble Blood. So you're going to pick Cappadocian cavalry that's going to do well against the heavy horse in prolonged melee. For the infantry, it's fairly obvious that you won't be able to bring swords that are better than what uh, the boy I can bring. But what you can do is you can bring cheap swords in order to absorb some enemy charges, get some charges in on your, of your own. And then you can use some pikemen in the center and back them back up some skirmishers uh, with the pikemen. So if you uh, pick a build like this, what you're going to what you're going to rely on is have an additional shock cavalry unit that's going to be very useful. What you're going to do with a build like this is you're going to deny, use the chariot to to stop the boy eye from engaging you. Because when, when the boy eye are running around and trying to get around the pikes, they're get, going to get shot at. Uh, they're going to be open for charges with shock cavalry. They're going to get attacked by chariots. And what you can do then is you can, pick, uh, you can put your chariot behind the pikemen so that if units are trying to outflank the pikemen the chariot can run out 
do some damage to the to the sword units that are trying to get around while the Scythian horse archers are dealing with enemy cavalry and key enemy units the eastern slingers are firing you're going to be kiting away while doing charges with your cavalry using the chariots running running uh, out through your own pikemen and then running back in and that can be very frustrating for the rush player because having a build like this with fast infantry uh, a lot of cavalry and skirmishers is going to allow you to keep kiting for a long time against uh, against a faction like the boyai and even against rome this can work um, pretty effectively in dealing with the roman cavalry with your uh, Scythian horse archers and your own cavalry uh, and also in in having the scythe chariots available for for taking care of the uh, of the infantry that can be uh, an effective counter and what also counters these sword factions is factions that has access to access to um, elephants but it gets a bit more tricky because a lot of the factions that have access to elephants aren't really great um, uh, aren't really great in the infantry department but something that can work against uh, these factions is Parthia uh, Parthia has amazing eastern cataphracts that's going to demolish the swords on the charge you also have access to the horse archers you have access to the elephants and the elephants in this patch can wreck entire uh, entire lines of enemy swords when they are engaged you can either go for a sword line that's going to be able to hold fairly well against against um, the boy eye or you can go for a more traditional parthian build uh, that's going to use cheap hoplites as the infantry and then you're going to go for since the skirmishing threat isn't very real from uh, from the boy eye and from uh, from tylus you can either go for Persian Light Archers or Parthian Foot. Parthian Foot have 40 missile damage, which is very, very good. Then you can go for 6 Parthian Foot Archers, for example. Uh, you can go a bit cheaper on the Persian Hoplites, which can allow you to bring some, some Mercenary Sarmatian Lancers or an additional Horse Archer unit, if you, the rules are such that you can bring 4, four Horse Archers. Instead of the Persian... Uh, Hoplites, you can bring some more, uh, some Eastern Spearmen, and you, you can give some of your units chevrons. And what's this going to do? It's it's going to negate the, the uh, it's going to negate the strategy of the sword sword spam factions. The sword spam factions are great at taking out enemy infantry, but you don't have much infantry to take out. You can use your cavalry, uh, your horse archers, your elephants to take care of the, to take care of the enemy cavalry and do a lot of damage to them while you are protecting your skirmishers and like you've seen in several of my battles if if a sword rush loses its cavalry support and loses its skirmishing support and you have archers elephants and horse archers then it's going to be very easy to kite to tire out the enemy army and then to just cycle charge it into oblivion even though the army is vastly superior in terms of numbers armenia can also do some interesting things and um, the, the thing that Armenia can do is it can bring very very cheap shock cavalry. So the shock cavalry counters the swords to, uh, to some extent. The slingers are also going to counter the, the sword spam and you're going to use the Persian cavalry to protect against the heavy horse, uh, against the heavy horse units. Then you're also going to have Eastern Spearmen to move in and support the Persian Cavalry. Ideally, you want to charge with the Persian Cavalry, get them out and get the Eastern Spearmen uh, in there as well. Having some uh, Noble Horse Archers, for example, they are a very expensive choice. But the thing about the Noble Horse Archers is that when they have spent their ammunition in, uh, they can be useful in charging down enemy skirmishers and uh, doing a lot of damage that way. So builds like this are essentially negating the strength of your opponent's army and being able to kill a lot of infantry. You wa they won't be able to get effectively at the uh, at the cavalry, and if you're able to support your cavalry well, uh, your skirmishers well, which you should be able to do wh when you have the cavalry advantage, that means you're going to be able to kite and negate engagements, use all of your ammunition, and then start cycle charging with the Persian cavalry. So these factions can be very strong. Armenia isn't the counter to these factions uh, in the same in the same way that. Um, that Parthia and uh, let's see, uh, Parthia and 
Pontus is. Any faction that has a chariot, so Egypt will also be a good counter to these uh, to these barbarian uh, sword spam uh, sword spam uh, factions. The same with the Seleucids. What the Seleucids can do, and one of the reasons why people like to ban the Seleucids, is because the Seleucids can go for both side chariots. They can go for some pikemen to protect them. They have strong skirmishers in the form of they have basically have the the eastern skirmisher lineup, uh, but they also have Syrian heavy archers. So if you need to take down a lot of enemy swords, you can go for some Eastern Slingers, you can go for the side Chariots. You can all have some uh, nice Median Cavalry to fight the Heavy Horse. Um, you can also have some Thorax Swords for for your flanks. You can have bring a lot of Thorax Swords actually. And then bring more Skirmishers. An additional Skirmisher, an additional Cavalry Unit to chase down any enemy Skirmishers if there are. So the main thing about countering sword builds is that you're going to use units that are going to negate the mobility of the sword rush units like pikemen that are going to allow you to protect key parts of your line where like where your eastern slingers are you're going to be using your cavalry to take out the enemy cavalry so you're going to need a cavalry advantage and then you're going to need a special unit either in the form of scythe chariots or in the form of elephants that is going to be able to take out a lot of enemy enemy um, swords when the engagement does happen. So when countering sword spams, you're not going to try to out spam the swords with factions that have weaker swords. You're going to bring other units like good skirmishers, good cavalry and good special units in order to counter the infantry advantage that the other factions have. Because there's no way you're going to be able to out infantry the Boii or the or Tylus or Rome with other factions unless you play extremely well. But you can match them. But matching is a different thing than countering. So when you have the Boii up against Tylus, for example, you will see Tylus being able to outspam the Boii. And when the Boii is up against Rome, you will see the Boii able to outspam Rome in the sword department. So that's it for some ways uh, of thinking. There are several other in how to counter these sword sword factions. They can, of course, be used against each other, but then it's a matter of how you use your units and which units you match up against which units. The counters are still going to be chariots, um, to a certain degree pikes to protect your skirmishers, and good cavalry to negate the cavalry of uh, the Boii and, and Rome and um, Tylus, and skirmishers to be able to, to kite and do a lot of damage in the late game. Strength and honor.